Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at something that I get the occasional question about, which is how to create multiple different models and sign into each one in a Rails application. I think most of the questions are probably more so to do with after you sign up, how do you do a current user check or a current admin check or whatever, because uh, people try and use current users when they have like multiple different models, which of course doesn't make a lot of sense. So we're just going to quickly set something up like this where you can log in as either a user account like this, which then allows you to visit user specific things, but you aren't able to access like admin specific paths, for example. Uh, so we leave this one restricted. And it also ensures that when you're logged into one account, you don't see the sign up for the other account option, unless you want to, of course. This does allow you to sign up as an admin in this case, uh, but you know, use your imagination. It probably wouldn't be two different user models. Uh, maybe you run an organization where, uh, I don't know, you like run a university uh, and you need like professors and TAs to be able to sign up for accounts so they can manage like the, the course website or whatever. Uh, in that case, they have like a sign up portal or whatever. They go there, they sign up. You have to choose between the two. This is sort of how you would do it. You probably don't want to leave your admin sign up uh, exposed with just needing an email and a password unless you do. Uh, I think people have requested that too. You can also do that here. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's sign set this up real quick because uh, this really won't take that long. We're going to go ahead and clear our terminal CD out of our example app and run a uh, Rails new video. And then we'll just go ahead and we'll CD into that video project and then we'll run a code dot to open it up inside of VS Code. Now, there's a couple different things you probably need to be aware of uh, running this. You, you're you going to have to replicate some logic or put the logic into concerns of some kind or service objects or whatever. I'm not going to tell you to live your life. I don't care at the end of the day. Uh, but you probably want to make sure that you're not replicating too much logic. As a general rule of thumb, if you replicate something once, that's okay. A second time is a warning and a third time means you probably should refactor. So it's not always a bad thing, but it is something I do want you to be aware of. Now we are gonna start by just running a bundle add for device real quick. That's gonna add the gem to our gem file. I'm then going to create a pages controller with three different routes. So we'll say rails g controller pages home, just like we always do. Uh, and then let's do a users and a admin action as well. The reason why I do this is just so that we can check if our before action for authenticate current user also works for authenticating like the current admin, right? Uh, now that we have that, let's go ahead and let's do a rails g device colon install command to install device. And then of course we want to do a rails g device user just like we normally would. At this point, we're gonna have our first deviation, which is we need to do a Rails G device admin as well, which is where we get our second model. Now you'll see this does generate routes for each of them. So that's not something you need to worry about unless you wanna do something like separate controllers. So let's say you have a Rails G device uh, colon controllers for the users, right? I'll go ahead and run that. So now we can set our device for our users to use these specific users controllers that we're overriding. Now you'll also want to do something for your admins, maybe, in which case you want to run this command again. Now you'll have to edit your route. So we'll come into our config and our routes.rb real quick. We'll change our git for the pages controller home action to be a uh, root. For the controllers here, again, it's just like you normally would have it. You're just going to have your controllers colon and then whatever controller you want to override is going to go in here. But you want to make sure it's specific to the uh, thing you're using. So here we have the the admins directory, which is our app uh, controllers. We have our admin right here. This is assuming it's plural. I generated it singular, which means it's different between the admin and the users. It's my bad. Uh, so you do want to check that. And then you should be good to go because our users is plural right here. So we have the same controllers in each right now, but if you override them, then you know you you have your route set up here as well. Uh, if you need to add extra, of course, just in case someone doesn't know this, you can just add in a second one here for like your registrations. And then you have the option for all six of these controllers. Now for the views, uh, that's gonna be the same. You're gonna do Rails G devise views, oops, devise colon views. This is gonna be shared. These are uh, shared resources. You can see here, shared views generator. So this is gonna give you the same views for each, which means you only have to customize these once. That said, you're gonna have to do a lot of extra work probably if you want to have 
completely different sign-in look and feel for your various uh, user models. So that's something where you probably don't want to go through all of it, but maybe you do. Now, if you do want to have separate uh, views or whatever for, let's say, your users and your admins, you don't want to just have this shared, you want to hook it up yourself, you can go ahead and run a Rails G device colon views and then pass in the users as well. And then you can also pass in the admin. I'll just do that real quick. And that's how you can generate each of these yourself. So you'll see these also have your confirmations, your registrations, etc. cetera. Uh, and now they're no longer these shared resources. So that's where you, you have to hook stuff up and make sure you're setting stuff up correctly to, uh, to have this functionality. But okay, how can we control what appears on the page? Let's go ahead and let's handle that real quick and then we can get out of here. Let's come into our views, our pages and our homepage. Now, generally speaking, there's two different ways you've probably seen me do this check before. I've done an if current underscore user. Uh, and in this one in Rails 7 land, I have something like a sign out link, which is uh, a little bit lengthy, but it's sign out, destroy user session path, method delete with the data turbo method delete. Uh, and then you would also maybe have a edit uh, registration path. And then in your else, you would have something like a sign up for a new registration path and a new session path. So this is option one. This is like the, the old way of doing it, right? So this is like, um, we'll just do a H3 and we'll say if you, if you saw the old way, right? H, H3. Uh, and then there's another way. We can say something like uh, what you might have seen lately. And the reason why I've been using this lately is because I've been sort of building up to this. Uh, that is a quick check if a user is signed in. Now this is similar, but this has the distinction of just being a little bit more clear for what it's doing. And it's similar in, in concept. You're going to paste in the same links. These are going to be exactly the same between the two and your sign in and sign up are going to be the same. But there's an issue with this. So let's say we take this and we run this over here and we, oops, we run a Rails DB colon migrate and we run a Rails S. If we come in here and we refresh real quick, if we, uh, let's say, sign in for uh, or sign up for dean at example.com. And I'm just going to copy my email and paste it in so I can do this a bit easier. You can see we have the sign out and the edit user registration path. That's fine. But now when we cover the admin links, so say admin links, this is where we're going to run into issues uh, because, of course, uh, it's going to be very similar. We can do something like uh, if uh, uh, admin signed in question mark. And we're just going to do the exact same thing for these links. So hopefully it'll work. Uh, but you'll see here, instead of using user anywhere, we had a user before it's now the uh, keyword admin. So it's destroy admin session path, edit admin session path or registration path, etc. else. And then we can do our sign in sign up links for new admin registration. If we do this, we're still signed in as a user, but now we have the option to also sign in or sign up as an admin, which doesn't make sense because we're already logged in. So we shouldn't be seeing this probably depending on what you want. Maybe this is what you what you actually want. Uh, so let's come in here. Let's do admin at example.com with a password of password. So now I'm signed in as a admin and as a user, and this is where it gets a little weird for me. So instead, what makes more sense for me, because I just clicked log out, so that just logged me out of everything, is to do a check instead of having this else, uh, doing a check where we say else if, uh, let's say admin underscore signed underscore in question mark. If the admin is signed in, then uh, we don't want to display this. So let's go ahead and let's invert this. And now you can see we have a check. If the user signed in, we display these links. Else if a admin is not signed in, then we want to display a sign in or sign up. If a admin is signed in, we don't display this. So now if we come in here and we refresh, uh, you'll hopefully see after we sign in with dean at example.com uh, that we now don't uh, hopefully see, uh, I did that in the wrong order. We got to do the same thing down here for the users. Uh, and let me just grab the user signed in do this check. Now, if I refresh, you'll see the admin links go away. Okay. Maybe you also want to hide these admin links. So you do something where you just pop it in here uh, and then pop it in here, something like that. So it's, it's un uh, invisible here. We sign out now it's visible again and you get the idea. 
All right, and before I forget, we'll just create those page links real quick. So we'll just say, uh, we'll make the page links right here, H3, page links. So we'll create these and then we'll restrict the, uh, the ability to navigate to each one. So as you'll recall, we had the users and we had the admin path, right? So we'll say users path, admin path, and these are from the pages. So it'll be pages underscore users underscore path. And then this one will be admin underscore or sorry, pages underscore admin underscore path. And now we want to restrict who can access these. Uh, you can also move these up into your links if you want to, but in this case, we're just gonna leave them down here. Let me go ahead and run a Rails S again and zoom in uh, because I forgot to record this bit. So let me move this back over and we'll just say local host port 3000. All right, so we have our paths down here and we probably want to do something like a div with a style equal to margin dash top of 5 p.m. And then we'll go ahead and close this div. There we go. So now we can zoom down a bit. So we have these paths. I want to restrict it so you can't access these. Let's come into our controllers and let's come into, let's say our pages controller. And then for the users action, we'll have a before action where we authenticate user, but we only do this for the users. And then we can come down here we can do a before action where we authenticate admin only for the admins. Go ahead and we'll refresh, click on the users path. That won't work. Come back, click on the admins path. That also won't work. And you can see each of these takes us to the users path or the admin path uh, respectively. And now for a quick and dirty way, if you ever want to make sure that your admins can still access a route, the easiest way, in my opinion, uh, you can of course override like your authenticate user, but you can also just put a comma here and say, unless a admin is signed in. You then come over here, refresh, click on the user's path, and now the admin can see this user's route. And the benefit of this is it makes it very clear uh, why this works, because it's just sitting here in the controller. But of course, that's up to everyone's personal taste. Anyways, that's all I really have time for today. As you can see, it is 2.30 in the morning for me here. Uh, so hopefully you found this informative and helpful, and hopefully I will see you in the next one.